Blend for Web provide example code snippets. The Gamepad code snippet provides example code that controls a character rig. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain most of the code from the snippet. I have stripped out all the gamepad sensors, leaving only the keyboard sensors to control the character rig. This makes the listing shorter and easier to understand. With a few small changes, the code can be used to control any character rig, the Android rig, for example. I'll put the edited code and the Android rig for you to download at my website. The Blend for Web API is a library of ready-made functions organized into modules. Functions from all these modules are used in the code snippet. When you write a new application program, you register a new module. And scrolling to the end of the program, you use require to include your new module and at the same time call the init function from the module. Scrolling back to the top, this is where we start with a call to the init function. I have skipped over these variable declarations, but I will go over them when we use the variables in the program. The main purpose of the init function is to prepare the web page ready for the 3D scene to be loaded. It also gives the name of the callback function that is to be called when the initialization process is complete. The initCB function calls the load function. The load function loads the Blender 3D scene that has been exported in the JSON format. The load function also gives the name of a callback function to be called when the load process is complete. The callback function calls three functions. The first one called is set camera position. The set camera position function uses two functions from the scenes module. The get active camera function which returns a link to the active camera and the getObjectByName function which returns a link to the object that has the name Armature. Armature is the name of the Android rig. The link is stored in a variable called TrollRig but the troll has been replaced by the Android. The append track function from the constraints module will constrain the camera so that it always looks at the troll rig which has been replaced by the Android rig. The next function called is the prepare animation function. The get object by name function is used again to return a link to the Android rig, which is stored in a variable called troll rig. There must be an action called walk in the Blender file. The apply function allocates the walk action to animation slot 0. The set behavior function sets the behavior of the animation in slot 0 to be cyclic. The next function called I have renamed. In the original Troll Gamepad program, the function was called Create Gamepad Sensors, but I've stripped out all the gamepad sensors, leaving only the keyboard sensors, to make the program shorter and simpler, and I renamed the function Create Movement Sensors. 
The first line of the function we have met twice before, it returns a link to the Android rig. The next line is the start of one of the callback functions that are called when the sensors are activated. There are two callback functions and I'm going to skip over them now and come back to them later. The last line in the create movement sensors function is a call to the create sensors function. The first eight lines of the function create keyboard sensors for the arrow keys and the alternative WASD keys that control the character. The next line creates an elapsed time sensor for the timing of the movement. Next we come to another function which I'm going to skip and come back to. Next we come to a call to the create sensor manifold function which is central to event driven programming using the blend for web API. It links the sensors to a callback function which is called when the sensors become active. The object that is affected is passed to the callback function. Five sensor manifolds are created. Four of them call the same callback function. So each manifold has a unique manifold ID so that the callback function knows which manifold called it. Next is the callback execution mode. Looking at the blend for web manual in the for application developers section event driven model they list the options for the callback execution mode. With the CT continuous mode a call to the callback function is made every frame with a positive logic function result. The logic function combines the results of the sensors and once with a zero result. This is similar to pulse mode with the Blender game engine. With CT trigger mode there's a call to the callback function if the logic function result switches. Next is a collection or array of sensors to be monitored. Next comes the logic function. I'm going to look at the animation logic function first. The logic function combines the results of the sensors using logical operators. The two vertical lines is logical or. So this function returns true if any of the sensors become active. This logic function returns true regardless of any activity. Next is the callback function which I'll now go back and have a look at. You may have noticed that the function is defined in an expression. We create a new variable sensor CB in which the function is stored and when we use the variable the function is evoked. The get sensor value function uses the sensor array index. Here is the sensor array. The first element has an index of 0 the second element an index of 1 and the third element has an index of 2. So the function gets the value from the elapsed time sensor. Once the Android has been rotated in 3D space the forward direction becomes local to the Android and we have to use quaternions and vectors to calculate the displacement in the forward local direction. The step is the displacement 
and the bigger the step the faster the Android will move we need a switch statement on manifold ID because four manifolds call the sensor CB callback function so we need a case for each manifold with the up manifold the first sensor in the array is the W key the second sensor in the array is the up arrow if the W key or the up arrow are pressed that is the condition if the condition is true the Android is moved forwards with the down manifold the first sensor in the array is the S key the second is the down arrow and if they are pressed we move the Android back with the left and right manifolds we rotate the Android by the rotation angle clockwise and counterclockwise scrolling down the translation is calculated but not actually applied until we get to this line an extra check has been added using logical and so both conditions must be true a check for the distance from the middle so the Android can only travel so far before it will stop moving the animation sensor callback function is called when the forwards and back keys are pressed when the forwards keys are pressed the animation speed is set to the animation speed when the back keys are pressed the animation is set to play backwards scrolling up the step and the animation speed may need adjusting to match the walk cycle to the speed of the Android and the collision radius is the distance the Android can travel from the middle before it stops. That's the end of the tutorial. To download the files used in the tutorial visit my website click the eye icon. If you'd like to subscribe click the link or the stick man. If you'd like to sponsor my tutorials click the link Thanks for watching and goodbye.